and the previous video got cut out because my memory card was full but now the new video so anyways he asked me about advice about learning English improving his English skills well when it comes to uh, probably going to uh, let's let, let's narrow the scope of this uh, English uh, skill uh, in university education scope so let's say uh, if you want to study abroad at a university in Canada I think first thing that you really definitely need to uh, focus on is uh, vocabularies. So when you're studying at uh, university, most of the you know top two skills, English skills that are required for you to get higher grades are reading and writing, and then listening comes at all after. Speaking, it, well, I'm talking in terms of uh, computer science or engineering major. Most of the time, you really need to be able to read uh, textbooks. You really need to be able to write a little bit and then you also need to be able to listen to professors and classmates to do the basic fundamentals you know basic building blocks of any language first is vocabularies vocabulary is the single most atomic word that you can break down the sentence into right sentence is you know sets of words and the word cannot be broken down into anything else further so vocabulary first, and then after focus on uh, focus on grammar, and then focus on like you know writing you know structures like a sentence. But you don't really need to focus too much on writing because if you're study, going to study engineering computer science, you won't need to take uh, more than two English writing courses throughout the whole undergrad program at at SFU. In terms of listening, how did I study? Well, I was listening to CNN podcast called uh, 60 Seconds News and a Scientific American. The Scientific American and 60 Second News were pretty good because they speak pretty fast as well as they were using you know, some of those in you know, academic vocabularies, especially Scientific American. And so it's good enough for you to kind of get yourself familiarized with those a little bit, you know, intellectual uh, t uh, terminologies and vocabularies. In terms of speaking, I try to uh, practice with 60-minute, uh, 60 60-second 60 news, as well as, uh, you know, kind of uh, you know, practice uh, reading out, you know, talking out loud, some of the, you know, easy um, articles. But other than that, you probably won't need to really focus too much on speaking at this point, but first thing first, you need to focus on vocabularies first, and then you're gonna correct your you know pronunciations and accent on you know throughout your you know uh, undergrad. So you know you, you you're gonna eventually you know, need to work on it, but that's not top priority right now. So focus on vocabularies first, and then grammar, and then you know listening, uh, speaking to get TOEFL scores high enough. All right. So that's my uh, advice in terms of uh, uh, English. Other questions. Uh, this guy also asked me really vague questions, which is okay, but try to be specific when you want to ask me questions. He said, which one do you prefer, whether working at international companies in Japan or working abroad? So, in Japan, how do you think about it? In Japan, how do you think about it? It depends. It really depends on what you want in your life. I prefer to work abroad because even if those you know, international companies are located in Japan, they are just even if they are branches, uh, let's say American-based companies, their internal cultures in Japanese branch would probably follow a lot about Japanese cultures and standards because people are eventually the ones factors, the biggest factors to determine working culture, people, communications, and whatnot. So, if, so most of the time. Even if those companies are international, let's say like in a bank, let's say um, uh, insurance company, let's say uh, consulting firms, they do have a little bit mixture of uh, Western working com uh, work and life balance culture and the Japanese you know culture because your boss is gonna be Japanese, so probably the management is a little bit toward the side of Japanese companies, and I don't like that personally and. There's an exception to that. A little bit of an exception, you know, is a little bit of engineering company. One of the biggest engineering companies, like you know, Microsoft, Google, um, those companies.
to 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 get a job at those companies in Japan specifically, you need to have master's degree at the Tokyo University. That's as far as I know, based on what I saw, people working at Google, most of them have masters in computer science from Tokyo University. So probably this doesn't apply to most uh, viewers right now. But you know, even if they have um, you know Japanese branch in Japan, g let's say Google. Google is one of the best companies in the world to work for. They have strong you know work and a life balance, even if it's in Japan. So that's an exception because they have shit tons of money, right? So that's a little different because it's a software technology company, one of the biggest companies in the world, like top three right now. So that's an exception. But most of the time, Gaishike, it's gonna be like Japanese company. Your salary is gonna be a little higher than Japanese companies, but not as high as ones in North America. What else? Other questions? CS no naka de. So this guy asked me a question, uh, among uh, computer science, there are many fields like software engineering, software developer, network engineering, database. Uh, he asked me, you know, as I already mentioned in the video, that software engineer and software developer uh, work on his own creativity and adaptability, whereas network engineer tends to have routine work. And he asked me, what other fields in computer science tend to have more routine work. So network engineering for sure, because that's like, you know, it's standardized, really static. You know, knowledge doesn't change really. Only thing that's changing is pretty much like IP v6, right? Uh, database for sure is a really static. Um, let's say, um, that's pretty much only thing that I can think about right now. Computer science field, uh, software engineer, software developer are always adapting to the changes new technologies, new language, new syntax of the language. Uh, so creativity, adaptability for sure. And what else? Database. Database network. IT Atomy, yeah. They're pretty routine, static. And uh, it's a little bit different from computer science. Testers, yeah, testers. I Testers, like, you know, QA, quality assurance people are a little different from software engineering because they don't really design and then implement, execute, write code. They are pretty much doing you know, testing every day. So those are more routine works. What else? That's it guys at this point. So thank you guys for uh, asking me questions. If you have any more questions, make sure to try your best to ask me specific questions and your long-term goal. Because depending on your long term girl, long term girl, um, uh, my answer might you know vary. So so that's that. Other than that, always welcome to ask me questions. Uh, if you can be uh, any of your help, uh, I'm glad I'm I'm glad to be of your help. So um, other than that, uh, keep watching my videos. I'll be pumping up other more contents, a little bit more in the English videos because um, it's better for me to speak English. It's easier. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.